Today's Excel lesson will be about using statistical analysis on different types of data, which becomes very useful if you're an engineer. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to generate some random data. And what we're going to do here is in cell A1, we'll type equals, and we'll say rand between. And here we can choose two numbers to randomly pick from. We're going to go 1 to 6, so this is the equivalent of just rolling a dice. And I'll just pick a random number. Now if we take this, we'll drag this all the way out to A10, and we'll get a whole series of numbers here. Now if we want to analyze this data, we can use some of the pre-built Excel functions. Here we're going to first find the mean, so let's say mean equals, and tab over, and here we'll put in equals average, and we'll select the average of all those numbers, close it, and it'll give us the mean. Next, let's uh, do the median. And you'll notice that when I tab over, all of these random numbers will regenerate, and this will generate as well. Let's go in here and say equals median, pick the same range, equals. Now you'll notice that the mean and the median are different. If we remember that the mean is adding up all the numbers and dividing by the number of instances, in this case 10, and that will give you the value right in the center. The median, however, is when you take all these values and you find the middle value, and that's the value above and below which how things are weighted. So the mean will t median will tell you if more data is weighted above the mean than below the mean. And it kind of gives you an idea of how, how all the data is distributed. Now let's go ahead and also do the standard deviation. So uh, say standard dev equals, we'll say equals st dev. And choose this one. Oops. And drag these out and give that. Now the standard deviation puts it within a normal bell curve and, and uh, shows you how much this data deviates from a standard curve. Now there's another version of, of this that goes along with it called the variance. And the variance is actually the squared term of the standard de deviation. Um, and if you'll look at the equations for standard deviation and variance, you will notice that the units line up when we use standard deviation because first we square all the values and then we take the square root of them so the units stay the same. The variance, that's not, that's not true. You will get the square of the units. So oftentimes it is useful to put things inside standard deviation form so that you can keep the units that are expected. Okay, let's go ahead and make a histogram um, of all this data. We'll go here and let's type bin range because we're only going to allow the numbers to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So we need to give that as a bin range so that we don't um, get confusing data. So um, to make it go from 1 to 6, we'll just say this is 1, this is 2, and we can use the autofill feature to go down like this. And now let's insert our histogram. In order to do that, you need to make sure that your analysis toolkit is installed. If it's um, just to check that, you can go to your Excel options, um, go to add-ins, and if analysis tool pack is not there, you can click go and select the analysis tool pack and add it into the active application add-ins. If you do that, there should be this box available here, and we're going to add a histogram from it. Let's go ahead and click data analysis, select histogram, hit OK. Now it'll ask for an input range. We're going to drag these out. It's going to ask for a bin range. What the bin range is, is, is what slots each one of the values should fall in. We want it to go between 1 and 6 like this. And make sure that you, uh, that you have your cumulative percentage checked and your chart output. So 
you can you don't actually have to make the histogram first and then do the cumulative percentage you can just check this box and I'll do it at the same time finally make sure that this button here for output range is selected and in here we're going to just select where we want to put it we're going to put it in E1 and hit OK and all this will update like this um, you'll notice that it's re-updated these values after it's made the histogram so these won't exactly line up with the chart um, but it gives you an idea of how Excel will find all the data and show you the distribution of it. Um, thanks for listening and I'll see you next week.